Welcome, you guys. It's so great um, just to be together tonight. And I just want to first off say thank you to all of the Life Group hosts and leaders. We are so grateful that you would open up your heart and your home to us and um, to those that, that want to go deeper. I just, I'm so excited also about this Easter Sunday. I hope you got some invite cards so you can invite people to join you um, or, and to attend an amazing service, um, a, a celebration of hope in Jesus Christ. You know, it says in 2 Corinthians 5.18 that every believer is called to the ministry of reconciliation. That means every one of us, every one of us has a calling and a purpose to reach out to those in our sphere of influence and invite them to come to know Christ. Pastor Sean and I, we believe in that. We believe in you. And we just want to give you guys an opportunity and empower you to do what God has called you to do. Um, a couple of uh, housekeeping items. Um, as you're coming to Easter Sunday, you're coming to our Easter service, um, I want you to bring some kids with you. We're going to have a wonderful Easter egg hunt. We have over 1,400 Easter eggs waiting for the kids at venue to go out and just uh, find them. Um, you know, if we have a little bit of rain, we're supposed to have some rain, but we're believing that it's going to be a sunny, sunny Sunday, all right? So we want you guys to pray tonight with us and believe with us that we're gonna have sunshine and dry grass. But what's awesome is behind the school, there is um, concrete, a very large, uh, most of you all know this because you've been back there on our family movie nights, um, but there's a big uh, concrete basketball court and there's also a playground um, that does not have anything but those uh, chips, you know, so that those will not be muddy areas. So regardless, we're going to go ahead and have the Easter egg hunt behind the school directly after service. We're so excited. We also have some awesome giveaways um, during and throughout the service. So, we are just so excited about this Easter Sunday. So don't forget your sunglasses. And I will take you in my arms and hold you right where you belong Till the day my life is through This I promise So as we concluded um, in the book of Song of Solomon, we got to see this couple and after all these years of, of being together, they were still so in love and it was evident to those around them. And we got some advice and some clues on how we can also have this kind of forever love. And on Sunday, I spoke about forever love and how we must have the element of commitment. So let's just jump right in here. We're going to start in Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death, its jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. You see, what she's saying here is, I want to be yours. I want to belong to you. And this seal was, was like a signet ring. It was something very significant. Um, and then she goes on to say, and love is strong as death. And as I said on Sunday, this is literally where we get the term, till death do us part. Um, and then she goes into its jealousy and yielding as the grave, meaning I would rather go to hell than break or, or have this covenant torn apart. You see, in order to have a forever love, we must have commitment. And you know, there's a vulnerability that comes with that. But unless we have this, we cannot have forever love. And that brings me to my first question tonight. How does a real till death do us part attitude change your relationships? Right. Well, I'm 
drinking coffee. I hope someone over there is drinking coffee. You know, coffee always makes life group a lot more fun. Mm. See, if you would come to my life group, you'd have my coffee. Just gotta, gotta put that in there. Well, we have to know that we do have an enemy, and the enemy comes and he wants to destroy every relationship. You know, he does not like unity, and we know this. And he's going to come in with the trials of life, and he's going to use things like offense and bitterness and anger. Um, and, you know, if we don't let go of those things, we are not, um, we're not going to have the, the kind of relationship that God intended for us to have. And I remember in my early years of marriage, um, Pastor Sean and I will be married 20 years this year, um, but I really struggled with letting go and, and of, even of my in, own insecurities and just really trusting and, um, and letting go of, of past hurts and things. And, you know, if we don't let those things go, what happens is they build up over the years and the months and, and really what happens is we move further and further apart um, from our, our husband or our wife. And then before you know it, we're moving, you know, we're, we're our relationship with God, you know, we've moved away from Him. Because you can't truly have a, a close, intimate relationship with God um, and have these these things in your heart. Um, there's there's something there that's that's going to hinder your relationship with God. And then you have your other relationships, your kids and, and people, other people in your life outside of your family. So it's so important. You know, forever love protects. So we want to protect our relationships. We want to protect our marriage. And that starts with, you know, getting those yucky things, those toxic things out of our heart. And here we see how her brothers came in to protect her, and she was not happy with them and, and everything. So let's read here in um, chapter 8, verse 8. We have a little sister, and her breasts are not yet grown. What shall we do for our sister on the day that she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build towers of silver on her. If she is a door, we will enclose her with panels of cedar. See, what they're saying here is, you know, what can we do for our sister to make sure that she is in a condition to get married, that she's ready? And they're saying, we'll build a wall. We'll protect her. We love her. Forever love protects. And then we're going to put gifts on that wall for that wedding day. But if she's a door, we're going to have to step in and really um, protect her from herself and build those walls of cedar. See, God wants to protect us. And even with our own children, you know, we, we see that. We want to set boundaries and we want to protect them because we love them. And it's necessary that we're committed. If we don't have this element of commitment and, and consistency and persistence, you know, we're not going, we're just, it's, it gets tiring after a while. And we all can, and, uh, can sit here tonight and admit that it gets tired, uh, can get tiresome. But it's so important that, that we are committed to protecting. And that means if your spouse is, is, in the room or he's not in the room, you're protecting him with your words and what you say about him or what you say about her, that you're building them up and you're looking at the good things and you're, you know, not dwelling on the negative things. Um, so let's move on here into our next question. Question number two, practically speaking, what does it look like to protect our relationships? Okay, yesterday there were two great takeaways um, from the book of Song of Solomon that we can take into our relationships. And, and one of those was relationships don't happen on accident. We can all, you know, uh, agree tonight that it takes intentionality to stay committed, to protect one another, to love, to invest, and, and just to, um, to build those relationships. If we're going to have forever love, we are going to have to be intentional. And that means, you know, we're going to have to kind of find out what, what do you like and what, you know, what can I do to really show you the kind of love that, that I really want to show you? Because God intended for us to put others before ourselves and to love the way that He loves. And, you know, as we also touched on, you know, the world will know you, will know us. The world will know um, the Father. They will know us by the by our love for one another. It's so valuable that we learn to love God's way. And that brings me to our, our second um, takeaway, that 
In order to really love, we have to understand and experience that love. And that, that is what will give us the capacity to truly love. And that's what we've been doing on these life group nights. We've been learning how to love better, how to love well. Um, and it's just been an awesome time. I've enjoyed it. I know so many of you have, have, you know, given us feedback and you've really enjoyed it. And we hope and pray that your relationships only get better, grow better, not bitter. We've enjoyed this journey with you guys. We love y'all. And that brings us to our last question of the night. What is the biggest takeaway you had from this book and series of life groups?